What's up, guys? This is Zara from MadeForMedical.com, and today we're going to talk about bone fractures. This video is part of a review series over the musculoskeletal system. In the previous videos, I went over osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. So if you're interested in those videos, check them out too. Link is in the description below. And as always, at the end of this video, don't forget to check out the latest videos and information at my website, madeformedical.com. First things first, what is a bone fracture? It's a medical condition where the continuity of the bone is broken. Like here in this diagram, we have a bone that doesn't look normal and is broken, so now we have two bones. But what causes this? Number one is trauma, of course. A fall, a motor vehicle accident, or a tackle during a football game can all result in fractures. Fractures may also be due to osteoporosis, which weakens bones and makes them more likely to break. Another thing is overuse. Repetitive motion can tire muscles and place more force on the bone. This can result in stress fractures. Stress fractures are more common in athletes. So let's talk about the types of bone fractures. Now really pay attention to this part, because I specifically remember test questions about types of bone fractures where you're given a scenario and you have to tell what type of fracture it is. Bone fractures can be categorized in four ways, by the position of the bone ends after the fracture, by the orientation of the break, by completeness of the fracture, or whether the bone ends penetrate the skin or not. So, the position of the bone ends can be classified into two types, non-displaced, where the bone's position does not move, or displaced, where you can see that the bone moves or is displaced. Now the orientation of the break what that means is whether the fracture is on a vertical axis or a horizontal axis, also known as linear or transverse. Penetration of the skin is obvious. A fracture that penetrates the skin will cause a compound fracture, and one that does not cross the skin will cause a simple fracture. Now let's talk about how a bone heals after it's fractured, or how the fracture repairs itself. So here is a typical long bone, and it contains a periosteum that wraps around the bone. This is the fracture, right here. This stage represents the events right after fracture has occurred. We have blood vessels here, and the blood accumulates after fracture. A few minutes after the fracture, the next phase begins. This phase is called hematoma formation and is characterized by the formation of swelling and pain, and blood accumulates at the site of fracture. After a few days, bone will go to the next stage, called fibrocartilaginous callus formation. So, the blood vessels here start growing, and new blood vessels start forming, and a meshwork from granulated tissue forms a callus. Also, we have formation of callus outside the fracture here. So, the granulation tissue fills in the gap where the fracture is, and rejoins the fractured bones together. Then, after a few weeks, the bone enters the next phase, called the bony callus formation phase. This is when the previously formed soft callus becomes the bony callus. So the soft callus converts to the bony callus in this stage. And finally, after several months, the bony callus remodels to become strong new bone, where the healing occurs. So the previously fractured bone is now completely healed after the four stages. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of a patient with fractured bone. To memorize it, just remember the phrase B slip duct. So B for bruising, along with swelling, irregularities, and pain. So as we discussed earlier, a patient with fractured bone will have bruising, swelling, irregularities, and pain at the site of fracture. So D is for deformity that depends upon the type of fracture. U means unnatural movements because the bone is broken and cannot provide support to the skeleton anymore. Hence, the movements of that limb or part of the body will be limited 
and painful. C is for crepitus, a crackling sound due to the bone fragments rubbing together. And T is for tenderness. B, slip, duct. Now let's look at our nursing interventions. What are you going to do for a patient who has a bone fracture? Suppose a patient comes to you with a broken leg. First of all, make sure they are stable and immobilize that fractured leg. Immobilization restricts motion to allow the injured area to heal. It can help reduce pain, swelling, and muscle spasms. In some cases, splints and casts are applied that repair bones, tendons, or ligaments. This allows for protection and proper alignment early in the healing process. Support the fracture site with pillows or folded blankets. Maintain a neutral position of affected part with sandbags, splints, trochanter roll, or footboard. Cover the site with a sterile dressing if the fracture is open or compound. Because they're at risk of getting infections, for example, osteomyelitis, closely monitor the ongoing treatment by the physician, like how effective pain medications are working, and also because we want to catch compartment syndrome early. Compartment syndrome is a painful condition that occurs when pressure within the muscles builds to dangerous levels. This pressure can decrease blood flow, which prevents nourishment and oxygen from reaching nerve and muscle cells. Now, let's look at what treatment options we have for a patient with fractured bone. In arm fractures in children, ibuprofen has been found to be as effective as a combination of acetaminophen and codeine for pain. Immobilization. Since bone healing is a natural process, fracture treatment aims to ensure the best possible function of the injured part after healing. Bone fractures are typically treated by restoring the fractured pieces of bone to their natural positions and maintaining those positions while the bone heals. Often, aligning the bone, called reduction, is needed, and it's done under anesthesia. This process is extremely painful without anesthesia, about as painful as breaking the bone itself. To this end, a fractured limb usually is immobilized with a plaster or fiberglass cast or splint that holds the bones in position and immobilizes the joints above and below the fracture. Surgical treatment. Usually, surgery is performed only if conservative treatment has failed, is likely to fail, or likely to result in a poor functional outcome. Occasionally, bone grafting is used to treat a fracture as well. Sometimes, bones are reinforced with metal, these implants must be designed and installed with care. Okay, so that's about bone fractures. Thank you so much for watching this video, and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to check out my website, madeformedical.com, and check out the other videos that are part of this series as well.